Kia ora koutou katoa. I'm Francesca from Charity Services and I'm a Regional Advisor on the Capability Team. I'm joined today by Lucy Beeler, who is a Senior Registration Analyst. Lucy's role is to assess applications for registration. Thanks for taking the time to join us today on this webinar on legal structures. This is the second webinar in our lunchtime webinar series for 2021. To find out when the next webinar is, please sign up for our newsletter on our website, that's www.charities.gov.nz, or follow us on the Charity Services Facebook page so you know when they're coming up. This webinar is being recorded and we will send you an email in the next few days with a link to the recording and links to any resources that we discussed today. Please feel free to share the recording with anyone who couldn't attend today. So we're just gonna talk a little bit about logistics here and let you know how the webinar will run. Make sure your computer sound is unmuted. If you have echoing or distortion coming through your speakers, then you should try using headphones instead as this may help. If your sound is cutting out intermittently, then check your internet connection and maybe turn it off and on and see if that helps. The webinar is being recorded and you will receive a link to the recording by email. Any links or resources that we talk about during the webinar today will also be sent to you. This is a listen only webinar. Click on the questions box at the bottom to ask questions, not the chat. And if your question doesn't get answered during the webinar, please email us at info at charities.gov.nz. So today's webinar is looking at some of the most common structures a charity can be. If you are confused about this, know that you're not alone. A lot of people find this difficult. And there's a lot of information out there which uses some pretty complex language too. But don't worry, the purpose of the webinar is to give you clarity on what your options are. So we'll have a look at each of the structures on the screen. We'll also give you a brief update on recent and upcoming changes in the law for charity, and we'll finish in time to answer some of your questions. So make sure you put your questions in the question box while we're presenting the webinar, and we'll try and answer as many as we can at the end. Often people talk about not-for-profits like they're the same as registered charities. While they have similarities, they're different. To be a registered charity in New Zealand, your organisation has to have purposes that fall into one of four categories. So they are the relief of poverty, the advancement of education, the advancement of religion, or other purposes beneficial to the community. Registered charities must provide a, pub, a benefit to the public and ensure there is no private benefit or profit to anyone who is involved in the charity. Registered charities are those that have been through an application process and they're listed on the Charities Register. There are a number of different ways that organisations can be set up and we're going to spend some time looking at each of them. Becoming a registered charity does not change your structure. So if you're an incorporated society before you get registered as a charity, you'll still be an incorporated society. What registration does is show that your organization is charitable under the Charities Act. So the most common structures are unincorporated or incorporated societies, charitable trusts or incorporated charitable trust boards. And I'm just gonna stop there. So normally we would just call that a charitable trust board, but for the purpose of just distinguishing it from charitable trust, I'm gonna call it an incorporated charitable trust board today. And the last type is a limited liability company. Charities can also be formed a few other ways, either under an act of parliament, and they can take different forms from the ones mentioned above, like a marae. But today we're just gonna focus on the most common ones above. So the pie chart on the screen shows the types of charities listed on the charities register. Starting from largest to smallest, you can see that Incorporated charitable trust boards are 41% of the register. Incorporated societies are 22%. Unincorporated societies and other unincorporated charities make up 19%. 
unincorporated charitable trusts make up 14% of the register and limited liability companies are the smallest of all at just 4%. The most important thing that this graph tells us is that 63, sorry, 63% of all the organizations on the register are incorporated, which means they're legal entities. Now I'm gonna hand over to Lucy and she's gonna talk more about what a legal entity is. Thanks, Francesca. So some of the structures we're going to talk about today are considered legal entities. So a legal entity is incorporated, and this means it is listed on one of the registers that the company, company's office looks after. The company's office registers are different from the charity's register. So if your charity is incorporated, this means it will be listed on the charity's register and the company's office register. So what is a legal entity? A legal entity creates a separate body from the people involved in it. This means that the organization is usually liable for the actions of the group and the people involved are not. One way to think about this is like a cloak of legal protection that shifts the responsibility from the individual to the legal entity. However, if individuals are negligent, reckless, corrupt, or make unlawful decisions, they could still be held personally responsible. So the table on the screen uh, shows the differences between organization structures. You can see that the organizations that are incorporated are the ones where a separate legal entity is created. And um, on the table, the ones in the darkest blue are the incorporated ones. This means that the liability shifts from individuals to the entity itself. Although this isn't true for all charities, some charities rules documents might specifically say that the liability still sits with the individuals. But for most charities, they are incorporated. Uh, the liability will shift to the legal entity. Um, and this chart will also be included on the resource sheet that we will provide to you after the webinar. Back to you, Francesca. Thanks, Lucy. So before we go on, we're going to explain what the company's office is, as we'll mention them throughout the webinar. So they're a government agency and they look after a number of registers. Today, we are talking about the incorporated societies, the charitable trusts, or the company's register. People often get confused about the charities register and the registers that the company's office looks after. For clarity, only registered charities are listed on the charities register. The company's office looks after a much wider range of registers. And if your charity is incorporated, then it will be listed on both of those. So we're gonna start with the most informal form a charity can take. An unincorporated society is usually an informal group or an organization that is just starting out. They're usually used for smaller groups who get together for a common purpose. Things like the chess club or tree planting in your neighborhood, play groups, that kind of thing. Unincorporated societies are not registered on any of the company's office registers and they're not a legal entity. An unincorporated society doesn't provide protection from liability. The society can't sue anyone or be sued. Each individual person is liable for the actions of the group. They're good for groups that don't want the burden of too much administration, or if you're just starting up and you haven't thought about becoming incorporated yet. Most funders want groups to be more formal, so you may only be eligible for small grants from funders. Unincorporated societies usually don't own any significant assets, employ staff, or rent or own a building. And if you're planning on having any of these things, an unincorporated society probably isn't the right structure for your group. And if anything goes wrong with your unincorporated society, then the liability is the responsibility of the individuals involved in the society. This kind of structure does not protect the people involved in it. So the next type of entity that we will talk about is an incorporated society, which is an organization with members. Members share an interest in a particular activity or subject. For example, it might be the local tramping club or a group of stamp collectors. Um, and many clubs are also incorporated societies. Societies are run democratically, which means that members have voting rights on decisions, and the society is required to have an annual general meeting. So the key features of an incorporated society are 
they create a separate legal entity that is distinct from its governing members. This means that even if the governing members change, the society will continue. Generally, the governing members are not liable for the actions of the society. Incorporated societies are registered on the incorporated society's register, and they can employ people, own assets, enter into contracts, and own or lease buildings. They are also a common structure in New Zealand. Incorporated societies are eligible for most types of funding, and this is because many funders prefer societies to be incorporated, as it means that the society, rather than the individuals, are accountable for the funds. So because the, the society is incorporated, the governing members are protected and the society itself is liable for anything if that goes wrong. Awesome, thank you, Lucy. So we've discussed societies and now we're gonna move on to trusts. So what is a trust? A trust is a legal, legally binding agreement created when a person transfers legal ownership of property to trustees to be held usually for a third party. For charities, the third party is the good they achieve through their charitable purpose. A charitable trust is an unincorporated trust. So this means it's not registered with the company's office and trustees are responsible for holding and managing the trust money and assets to carry out the purposes of the trust. The key features are that charitable trusts have trustees who govern the trust and they have various powers under trust law and the trust deed. A charitable trust does not have a separate legal identity from its trustees and they don't usually employ people or own major assets. The trustees are liable for their actions, although most trustees would include a clause that would protect the assets of the trust. If there is a breach of trust arising from the trustees' dishonesty, willful misconduct or gross negligence, then the trustee will be liable. These trusts may have less funding opportunities as they're not incorporated. And often we find these types of trusts on the charities register in the form of a will or a scholarship. A charitable trust is unincorporated. Therefore, if anything goes wrong, the liability usually lies with the trustees unless this is excluded by the trustee to talk about is an incorporated charitable trust board or for short I'll refer to it as an incorporated charitable trust. So an incorporated charitable trust forms its own legal identity when it registers with the company's office. Registering with the company's office means there's less personal risk to the individual trustees and more opportunities for funding. The key features of an incorporated charitable trust are it is its own legal entity that can enter into contracts and hold property in its own name and this is rather than the trustees owning it. Even if the trustees change, the incorporated charitable trust will continue. Trustees have protection from personal li liability, although there are some exceptions. An incorporated charitable trust can also employ people, borrow money, and own and lease buildings. There's also no requirement to have an annual general meeting unless the trustee says so. Incorporated charitable trusts are a common type of structure and are eligible for most types of funding in Aotearoa. So an incorporated charitable trust board is a separate entity from its trustees. And this means that if anything goes wrong, it is usually the trust board and not the trustees that become liable. So the last structure we'll discuss today is a limited liability company or a company for short. Before we get into what a company is, I'll briefly explain how companies can become registered charities. A company can apply to be a charity if it has exclusively charitable purposes, so this is what Francesca talked about earlier, uh, relieving poverty, advancing education or religion or other purposes beneficial to the community. Um, the company's rules document also has to have protections that prevent individuals from profiting or benefiting from the company. However, it can pay reasonable salaries and other expenses to advance the charitable purposes. And its rules document needs to state that if the charity winds up, its assets will go to charitable purposes. The company's rules also need to prevent paying any dividends to its shareholders or restrict the shareholders in any transfer of the shares to being registered charities. So back to what a company is. A company is its own legal entity that is separate from the individuals involved in running it. A company can do things like enter into contracts and borrow funds. If you're involved in business activities, for example, 
the selling of goods or services to fundraise for charitable purposes, then you may want to establish a company to make it easier to do business. The key features of a company are, it is managed by its directors and it's owned by its shareholders who control its activities by way of voting rights. Companies are required to have an annual meeting and companies, because they are their own legal entity, can enter into contracts and borrow funds, buy or rent property and apply for funding. It can also be easier to get a bank loan if you're a company. So to recap, a company is an incorporated entity. So this means if anything goes wrong, it is usually, usually the company that is liable and not the directors or the shareholders. However, the directors do have duties under the Companies Act and can be liable or even face charges if they breach those duties. Thank you, Francesca. Thanks, Lucy. So we've discussed the main forms a charity can take. We started with unincorporated societies, which are most suitable for informal, smaller groups that might not want to apply for very much funding. We then discussed incorporated societies, which are membership organizations, and they're incorporated as they're registered with the company's office, and they're listed on the incorporated societies register. We looked at charitable trust meets, which often have fewer trustees, and they're not incorporated. And then we talked about incorporated charitable trust boards, which are incorporated and they're listed on the charity, charitable trust register. And last up was limited liability companies who have directors and shareholders and are used mainly for more commercial activities, raising funds for charitable purposes. They're also incorporated and listed on the company's register. This presentation isn't about tax, but tax is an important consideration when thinking about what type of organisation to be. Inland Revenue has a guide to help you. It's a great source of information for charities and for not-for-profits about tax. And if you have any questions about tax, we recommend checking out the guide, which we'll include in the resources that we're going to send out to you today, or contacting Inland Revenue or your accountant. Now I'm going to hand back to Lucy and she's going to just give us a legislation update. Thanks, Francesca. So before we finish up, um, I'll just give you a quick update about changes in the law that might affect your charity. Consultation on the Incorporated Societies Bill has just closed and a report is due in October. So the purpose of the bill is to put in place a modern framework for basic legal governance and accountability obligations for incorporated societies and those who run them. It's long overdue as the old act was written in 1908. Key changes might include governance duties written into the act and new conflict of interest rules. The Trustees Act 2019 replaces the Trustees Act 1956 and the Perpetuities Act 1964. And this came into force in January of this year. The Trusts Act contains new governance requirements and has mandatory and default duties for trustees. Um, we've written a blog and took part in a recent webinar on the changes, and we will send you the links to these um, with the list of other resources after this webinar. If you still need someone to help talk you through setting up an organisation, then you can book into a clinic on our website. We can either have a Zoom meeting with you or call you. If you have a general question or you aren't sure how to book online, then you can also email us at info at charities.govt.nz or you can call us. So we've got some time for your questions now. And just remember, if your question doesn't get answered today, then please email us at the info at charities.gov.nz email address. Questions are just coming through now. Um, so the first question, is there a template available? Uh, yes, there is. MB have a constitution builder for incorporated societies. Um, and so that's at the company's office. And Community Net have a template for trust. And we will send, we can send links to both of these to you. Uh, the next question. I'm still unsure what kind of structure is best for my group. Is it possible to talk to someone? Lucy, do you want to answer that one? 
Sure. So um, if you're unsure about what kind of structure to um, um, adopt, you can book, book a clinic session, session with us and, and we can talk you through, through the differences, differences, differences between, between structures. structures. Um, so we can't give you specific advice on what would be the best structure for your organization. Um, and you probably have to seek legal advice for that, but we can help you to, just, to decide uh, what structures might be better for your organization. Thanks, Lucy. Um, my next question, uh, what are the benefits of being a registered charity over a not-for-profit? Well, that's a big question. Um, in short, a registered charity can be more advantageous to you if you receive donations, as people can uh, claim a rebate on the donations. Your charity is listed on the charities register. So um, that's this transparency about what you do as you report once a year. Uh, some funders only fund registered charities. So that will be a consideration for your group. Um, just know that registration with charity services is voluntary. So if you decide you don't want to be registered, you should check with Inland Revenue. Uh, because you might be eligible for an income tax deduction for not-for-profits. Um, registered charities also have some obligations. So you need to let us know if your charity's details or your rules change at any time, and you need to provide um, annual reports on the charity's financial and non-financial information. So those are some things to consider if you want to become a registered charity. Uh, this is one for you, Lucy. If we are in an already incorporated society, what benefits would we achieve by changing structure to a charitable trust? Um, and I would answer this uh, briefly by saying it kind of depends on what you want um, to do with your organization. So um, if you are an incorporated society, it probably means that you've got members and uh, you part, uh, the members participate in making decisions, whereas uh, with a charitable trust, you'd have trustees who make decisions for the beneficiaries, which is the public good that you do through your charity charitable work. Um, so I'd, it's kind of more about what the organization wants to do that would be more beneficial depending on, on the structure. Awesome, thanks, Lucy. Gosh, quite a few questions here. So um, this one's about a charitable company. Uh, I'm thinking of setting up a charitable company to sell goods to raise money. Does my business have to sell something connected to my charitable work or can it be something completely different? That's a good question. So a charitable company can sell any kinds of goods and the goods don't have to be connected to the charitable work you are doing. But sometimes they are connected. Um, for example, the the Cancer Society, they sell sunscreen to prevent skin cancer. So that is connected to their work, but the connection isn't an actual requirement. The funds just need to be used for charitable purposes. Uh, here's another one. I'm just starting out and I'm not sure how successful my group is gonna be. Do I start small and use the incorporated society model? Could you answer that one, Lucy? Sure, so um, it'll depend on what your group is set up to do, um, how many people are involved and whether or not you want to apply for funding. Mm -hmm. um, setting up an unincorporated society is uh, the quickest, but it might not meet all of the needs of your organization. Um, and you can always incorporate later if you decide that you want to carry on and protect the group's liability. So um, it's a requirement to incorporate from the start. Great, thanks. This one's about rules documents. And um, the question is, what do people mean when they talk about rules, your charity rules? So I can answer that one. Um, because we deal with many different types of groups, we call all founding documents rules. But incorporated societies and companies founding documents are formally called constitutions. And a trust's rules are formally known as the trust deed. But um, at Charity Services, uh, we just talk about them as rules. Uh, do I have to re-register with Charity Services if I change my structure? Do you want to answer that one, Lucy? Sure. Um, so no, you don't have to re-register. All you have to do is update your details form with your online account 
and um, we'll update those details for you. But um, I will note that even though from our end, all you have to do is fill out a form, if you decide to change structures, you'll still have to wind up your old structure in practice and then transfer the assets to your new one um, to give effect to what you want to keep doing. So. Uh, here's another one. We already have a registered charity, but I'm not sure what kind of structure we have. How would I find out for sure? I can take this one. So um, usually you would check your rules document for first, so your constitution or your trust date. And it will usually say if you're a trust or an incorporated society. Um, you can also check to see if you're registered on one of the registers at the company's office. And if you're still having trouble, you can just email us on that info at charities.gov.nz email address. Uh, next question, I don't want to create a legal entity. Can an individual person apply to be a charity? Lucy, do you want to uh, take this one? Sure. So unfortunately, an individual person can't apply to be a charity. Um, under the Charities Act, an entity is defined as any society, institution, or trustees of a trust. So you can't just um, apply as yourself, unfortunately. <laughs> The next question is, what is the advantage for somebody like the Cancer Society selling sunscreen as a charitable company versus an incorporated society or a trust? Lucy, do you want to try this one? Um, sure. Yeah. So I guess the advantage of having a charitable company and selling sunscreen, um, the, the purpose of that is raising money for the Cancer Society to do its work. So the company structure, I guess, allows for commercial activities to, ha to happen, whereas it might be harder to uh, with another type of entity structure. Um, hopefully that answers that, but if you're still a little bit confused, um, you can, yeah, we, um, we can email you about different types of structures and the you know, general pros and cons, but we can't really uh, tell you specifically uh, what would be best for you. So, unfortunately. So the next question is, if I'm registered with both charity services in the company's office, who do I file with? And do I file with both? And um, hopefully someone will correct me, but I think that you just file with charity services. Is that right, Lucy? Um, if you if you mean filing uh, any updated information, you have to file with both the charities register and the company's office. Um, and incorporated societies don't have to do financials, um, but I think with the provisions in in um, the Charities Act and then the Trust Act and then Incorporated Societies Act and the Companies Act those requirements to keep information up to date. So you have to do it with all the different <laughs> registers. <laughs> but with um, for annual reporting, you just file with us. So if you're registered on, on both, you'll just file your annual report with us. So there's no more questions coming through. Those were some good ones though. Thank you very much for that. And it's now time to finish up. So. Um, if you want to attend any future webinars, we advertise them on Facebook and in our newsletter. Remember to like the Charity Services Facebook page and subscribe to the Charity Services newsletter. And if we didn't have time to answer your question or you've just thought of one now, please email your question to info at charities.gov.nz. So thank you. Thank you for attending today and thank you so much for the work that you do in your communities. We will send you a link to the webinar recording and links to the resources that we talked about today. And please feel free to share it with others who couldn't attend today. Enjoy your afternoon. Akiti anō.